Good day. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm sorry I missed that two o'clock uh, conversation. No problem. Let's do it. Let's see what we All can right. do here. Absolutely. Hey, sure. hey Marchin. Hi. So, well, what is the issue and in what way can I help? Okay. Should I start? So, with Christian? Well, let me give a, a quick overview and then, um, so Ashok, I think we talked previously that what Marchin is doing is um, a very unique offering in the residential marketplace. Actually, you know, in construction in general, these are um, these are homes that are kind of built in a, I think you use the term, a, a swarm environment where uh, mm -hmm. different people descend upon the construction site using, uh, I guess, Marchin, in many ways, these are, these are pre, well, I, let me back up. Marchin, why don't you describe what you do? Because you'll describe it better than me. And then Ashok, what we're trying to do is find a way to look at this through the lens of what HUD is doing with manufactured housing to see if there's some connection that you can make in your mind between the work that Marchin is doing and the way that with HUD manufactured housing, when it is delivered to someone's property, it can go through, it kind of preempts the local codes because it it's connected to the federal requirements, if that makes sense. Right. No, so it make maybe, sense. Martin, if you'll kind of talk through what you've got a little okay. bit, that will Excellent. help Ashok understand it better. Can you look at this? Can you see this? Yes, I can. Okay. So that's that's the house. Now, um, that's a basic modern uh, two-story house. It's a digital. This is really, uh, you can say, housing 2.0 with digital design. We're going digital fully. Martin, I think you're sharing. You're not sharing the screen anymore. You're sharing pictures of me and Ashok, which I like to look at. At, at one time, there was a screen. Then it went away. Oh, how, how about? Uh, oh, let's do it again. Oh, just, just this. Uh, that's what I wanted to show. I did see for a second a blue home, and then it went away. Yeah, we're not okay. seeing it yet. Oh, uh, you're not seeing my, uh, oh, there. Okay, well, just want to show you what okay. we're talking about just for reference. This is the mm -hmm. house, okay? So that's, that's what it looks like. Uh, just basics model. So, so this is full digital design. I mean, standard uh, slab, um, cardboard, uh, PV panels on top. Actually, the stock model. We're going kind of hardcore on the PV on the solar because it's um, it's just a good idea. Let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Standard option. Um, is, okay, that's it. That's all I've got to show. But but let's talk. Let's talk about. Um, okay, now we've got back. We're back to not sharing the screen, correct? Okay, correct. yeah, we are not sharing this. Okay, thing. so the idea here is that we're trying to make housing more efficient. This is a, a type of design that that's, puts a lot of focus on ease of build, so that either professionals or individuals can build it. We actually started this on, oh, this is going to be great for DIY people. Then we found out, oh, nobody builds houses, their houses anymore. This is not the 50s or last century. So mm -hmm. we're preparing a turnkey product. And the hallmark of it is, I mean, maybe two things. One is the, the efficiency, the full digital design that allows you to do a, a complete replica uh, with modular design. So all the panels are four by nine panels primarily. And then mm -hmm. the, the second part is how we build it. Because it's highly modular, we can ha the, the design is 24 people, five days on the work site. Mm -hmm. Or we can actually go in a workshop, prepare all the modules, and, and uh, transport them over to the site and do it that way as well. Digital design means that, like, right now, I mean, every single detail is fully in CAD. It's, it's near LOD 500. I mean, it's, it's not 500. It's, it's more like 400 right now. But um, the idea there is get this to the point that it's absolutely replicable. Uh, the trades are not inventing anything. We're actually training our people in our apprenticeship, which we're starting next year. We're training them to do everything as generalized uh, house builders, uh, focusing on, once again on the ease of build and everything else. So this lends itself to both DIY industrial production. The, the actual goal for next year is to turn this into a model. Right now it's plain stick built. Next year's goals are compressed earth block, which we actually also developed open source machines that do that. So we've done that. We've built a number of houses before that are made of compressed earth blocks. 
as well as 3D printing for the actual panels. So that's like a million dollar development project for the 3D printed panels and uh, so forth. But that's that's where we're going. So it's highly digital. It, it really does qualify as this. You're pr pretty much pre-designing everything that goes in there, uh, minimizing waste, uh, absolute efficiency on, on everything. So that's where we're at. And, and the, the thing right now that we were going through, we were just getting this through structural engineering and, uh, and uh, all the details are pretty much different. So we're actually struggling for the last six weeks trying to get the plans for the building department because uh, the structural engineer intends to put, put in standard details whereas, whereas we're not building standard details. So it's a back and forth kind of a thing right now. And it emphasizes this, this kind of a thing. Yeah, like if we could get this uh, to be more standardized and, uh, and approved in other ways where we don't have to struggle for the codes everywhere. Uh, I mean, we expect that as we go along, as you know, these houses are built, that's going to be easy because we say, oh, okay, we built this already. Here's all our data from the previous builds and so forth. But to get this to, to a point where um, we can negotiate, for example, say we go to a new place, we've got code officials, we have to work on their schedules. In a lot of places, it's not going to be possible to do it in five days because, like, for example, Kansas City, it's going to take, on average, two days for the inspector to show up. If there's five inspections, that's 10, 10 days dead time already that breaks our time budget. So we're trying to get, address that issue of trying to build, still maintain the five-day schedule per build, and that's, that's what we're designing for. I see your issue, and um, I think uh, it is a tougher problem than I thought it can be resolved mm -hmm. by looking at your model. The, the way the U.S. government or American regulatory system is set up, the housing and the buildings are by and large controlled by the local jurisdictions and they may adopt one code but they have modifications just like uh, Chris, you know what happens. Uh, you cannot take a home approved in uh, City of Central and take it to Baton Rouge and say, Correct. The City of Central approved it, therefore, why don't you accept that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a, a constitutional problem. It is not a technical problem. Mm -hmm. It is a problem of the laws and problem the way our constitution is set up. Yeah. The connection with the uh, modular mobile home, pr primarily uh, uh, manufactured home, is a very fundamental difference that you have, the only way you get this preemptive approval across the nation is by insisting that these homes are basically transportable that you can take them from point A to point B. What I noticed in your case was that you pour the slab and then you bring the modules and it looks like a site built home. And as such, it is not a transportable model and consequently will not fit into the legal definition by law, which is that the home has to be transportable and those homes are on chassis. That is the, the main problem and uh, by looking at your design for a few seconds, I will, uh, sitting at HUD, will conclude that it is not a transportable home. And consequently, the federal laws will not uh, uh, apply. Mm -hmm. What does ha uh, or or uh, can happen as you have already pointed out that if there are number of such homes approved by various jurisdictions then using that example from jurisdiction to jurisdiction it may be easier i think it is a chris more a question to you that if somebody came in and walked into city of central and he said well look all the adjoining uh, counties have approved that, would you kindly approve it, then you will still go through your due diligence and might take the comments made in a positive way and say, hmm, I, I am allowed to do that, but should I or should I not take this risk? It's a new way of building things. Our people are not inspecting 
as it is being built and in that sense uh, what do we do now there is a method which is uh, which is a little bit tricky that is actually the approval of modules which come in previously uh, has plumbing built in there or electric built in there and things of that kind that is once again done under the modular program and varies from state to state the preemption which is the goal which will bring in the uh, efficiency of um, uh, scale and ease is not possible under the manufactured home program because it is not transportable mm -hmm. that is that 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 stops that particular uh, approach and i was uh, i was under the impression that it is somehow going to be still transportable but built on site and and that i could have given some ideas as long as it is built on a on a quote unquote chassis <coughs> and they do build multi story homes uh, uh, but they, they what they do they get these i beams under the floor and then they put an i beam a type of a chassis type of a structure as a second floor so in theory you could dismantle it and put it back on on uh, on wheels quote unquote and uh, uh, take it to a different place this one will not meet that because it does not have that type of a floor it has a a regular uh, slab built and the modules come in with the uh, 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 different sections of the walls built in there with wiring probably already installed and they click in plumbing is probably installed and it clicks in kitchen module may be a di little different kind so you can put 20 people for 5 days and uh, complete this unit without having to go through inspections process and things like that that is uh, that is not directly possible under the manufacturing home program on where my expertise is and it is uh, even going to be difficult under the module section under the modular program because the modular program the whole home comes it comes built on a on a floor and put on a flat bed and is brought on site where the people put the pour the foundation and this kind of a unit can come in and is lifted from the from the uh, flat bed or uh, uh, kind of comes in two three different four different kind of units and and uh, put together and are screwed together now under those cases the local jurisdictions can be preempted as long as it gets a state level that it is a modular program and then has to meet with that state uh, requirements and uh, and uh, chris paul is an uh, a very very good at this thing we we had a a separate uh, branch of ibts which is now uh, or, or when our ncs bcs split it actually split into two portions one was ibts the other one was ibc the person who had that is a very good friend of both paul and i and paul actually knows him more because he meets him often he might be able to give uh, a idea that how do you bring modules built in and put them together like a lego there, there, there is possibility but it still has to deal with state by state and people can get away from the designs and from a uh, plumbing inspection this inspection that inspection they may only look into the installation inspection so there there a part of what he is looking for might be achievable but it uh, i still did not get a clear idea how big the modules are are these uh, panels a walls which are 4 feet by 9 feet or whatever and you you put them together 
or whatever and can each such module be uh, independently approved as as a uh, as a module and that uh, that comes in it is a tougher problem not from the technical point of view it's a problem from the legalistic and the for just 67 mm -hmm. the other other party that we really want to work with him is uh, Chris you and Paul can think of that uh, you take their design and uh, look into it and say that it uh, it complies with the I code and and hopefully expedite the approvals from the building code department but the inspection so, and, we, and we talked about that we talked about that option the challenge will be that there are still some local requirement for plumbing for electrical for yep. the connections even though the it may meet the building code and we and I was wondering as we're going through the discussion it sounds like there are two alternatives one would be if these could somehow be put onto a chassis yeah. and delivered so that would be the first question Let's for you march I think that's possible. Now, so, so let me show you a, like a 30 second video of how these are put together. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Eight by nine. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is um, four by nines. If you talk about the chassis, and I don't see why we can't do a uh, I beam or some some kind of a. So I tell you why the problem is going to come. The problem is going to come because the floor is a concrete floor. You can put a chassis only on walls and things like that. You could even brace them that they do not collapse. But this particular unit will not have a floor, floor per se. It will be a box without the bottom, and you can say, well, I can transport that. That unit itself, the box without the bottom, will not qualify the definition of a home. The box without the bottom? Yes, mm -hmm. the floor. Uh, the, the problem with that one is that uh, the home has to be transportable. The only thing which is allowed to be done is the foundation on site. This one actually is floor on site. Okay. Well, there's no and I think that is the difficulty. Mm -hmm. And and uh, if somebody was to let's say buy that home and say I want to move it across the state line, then the there is actually in theory you could take all the floors out but once it is fabricated then it will be uh, very hard to say that it is transportable as a home it is dismantable but not transportable as a home okay. the, the the problem with that one is this is how the uh, industry got the congress to pass the preemptive law mm -hmm. that it's that it is more akin to an automobile than to a home yeah. like a rv type or, or things of that kind this one does not fit that definition yeah well even uh, though you can transport it you can actually transport even a single family home if you spend enough money on it uh, and they have done that some historical building but that is not how it is a mass production type of a home and the cost will become expensive to prove it that it, it can be done and those things have to be left with the homeowner so if they were to sell it or move it they could okay what about the I beam so there is a floor like you saw the modules descending what if the the floor is there on top of the beam so that it is indeed transportable that's technically that's not a an issue on our side to execute that well if the uh, uh, i do not know if the i beam 
See, the way I am uh, envisioning is your floor slab is the floor. That four, four inch or six inch slab which you put on the ground is the floor of the of the dwelling. You make the enclosure which is either four by a nine panels or eight by nine panels and then you bring in a roof also which is a, a flat type of a roof in various panels and put it on top of those uh, uh, enclosing walls. That is what I saw and that that is true uh, that you could, but if you were to transport this unit as a home, how would you transport it? Yeah, so if you s remember how the, the roof modules went on, there they were like 3 by 16s What if you do the I-beam, you've got the, the 3 by 16 modules on the I-beam square frame, and then you've got the regular modules on top of that, so it's integral. And then, just like a trailer home, you put wheels on a, on a steel, uh, steel chassis. If you can make it transportable, then I think uh, getting a, declaring it a manufactured home is possible, but it does come yeah. with a political price. The political price is that people's perception of mobile home is that they are cheap, yep. they are low cost, and many jurisdictions, including City of Central, has actually zoning laws against that. Mm -hmm. One can fight them, but uh, and you will win if you fought that, because the, I, I know that by and large the courts go, it's a house, and, and you can uh, set up architectural standard. But I think in this case, um, the biggest challenge is going to make it transportable, particularly the, uh, the two-story types, that the top story is independently transportable and then liftable as a unit, not as panels, liftable as a unit and put on top of the first, because then if we, it was to go on panel, then it probably uh, a very different approach that is yeah. the modular home pro uh, program. That's why they call them modular program because you can put the module, yeah. uh, uh, different modules on it. I think that uh, the uh, the uh, modular program do not have a blanket uh, reciprocity. They do not have preemption. They do get a much bigger preemption in the sense of uh, a statewide in those states where the modular programs are permitted, yeah. state gives the license, and then then you can have at least instead of going through each jurisdiction, it becomes a a state or a broader issue. Yeah. But across the country, the only way to do that is to make it the old terminology mobile home, which they these days call them as manufactured home. So it, it moves as a unit it is a home and it cannot be substantially built at the site because the factory quality control program and the factory oversight program is not uh, available on site. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the issue. Where in this do, do so-called modular homes fit in? When you say manufacturing modular home, home uh, comply with the local laws and 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 the local laws variation there are states which have preempted uh, multiple local laws and they do provide some variation uh, but very limited and those are also built in a factory and then they are put on flat banks and they are brought in on site and by crane or whatever they, they lift them and put them on a foundation which is built on site. That is then permanently installed there and under those type of units it may be possible to call those uh, but you, you have actually components with trained people from your factory or people trained by you 
20 people coming there for five days, they have a, a rhythm and a pattern to it. So they can finish it, polish it, and on the end of the fifth day, they have the keys ready for somebody to walk in. I think it's a it's an idea which is definitely innovative. And the biggest challenge, I think, is, Chris, for you to challenge yourself, will City of Central accept it and why not? And the issues are going to come up. People are going to say, oh my God, what happened here? I, do I take the risk or I do not take the risk and things of that kind? They will want to have some protection other than uh, uh, your people in that building code department saying, I accept it. Well, it seems like if we worked it backwards, though, and we said, okay, what constitutes a manufactured home? And then had Marchand kind of work in that direction, figuring out what his, what he, or module, uh, what he has, what was he's proposing, how could that, how could his operation be modified to match what would be considered a manufactured home that we could have it manufactured at one location. You know, what we do is, you know, we go to the plants, we do the QA, QC to make sure that it meets the federal requirements for manufactured housing and the construction process at the plant is consistent and rigorous with the requirements. Um, and it seems like maybe that might be one approach. It, obviously, what what we're seeing right now isn't going to fit. Yeah, it's neither fish nor fowl. It will not be either manufactured housing, nor would it be considered modular. But it seemed like we could take a piece of one or the other and then fit into what you're doing reverse engineering wise. That's what I'm kind of wondering on your side, Marchin. Yeah, you could, but I just do want to mention that if it was to be somehow become a mobile or a modular, we would, uh, uh, hello, who is that? Um, is that Maurice? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I am on phone and, and I'll be with you shortly. Uh, uh, the, the issue with that one is going to be that as an organization, we have a monitoring contract for all the parties which provide design review as well as uh, inspection services at the factories for manufactured home, not modular. Modular we could, but there are other organizations which do modular and mobile. They, they are probably a better fit, but we could help in the design and the concepts if they were to ever come. But I, I think that uh, for modular homes, Chris, discussing this thing with Paul online will be very, very good. Maybe uh, I do have now a sketch which he has shown. Uh, I can discuss this thing with Paul and you and see is there anything which we can do. I think but that... Which do you think would be the path of least resistance? Do you think the path of least resistance would be to go the modular route and then to work it backwards from that point instead of trying to consider it as a because uh, as you're, you're saying that you're true it's true that the manufacturing housing industry has corporate players and there could be a lot of pushback or potential pushback against what March is trying to do versus modular housing which I think is more open sourced That's I think kind of modular my is a little bit more open source even though in that field also there are large corporations it's not the corporations which is really the problem. It will be creating the infrastructure and sales to support a factory. Factory is a very expensive thing. What they really build are not houses. They make panels and, and small modules, which probably a home can fit into one truck. And, and, and or two trucks and go there and are probably marked. Uh, this is the left panel, this is the right panel, and you build it in. There is a door which comes in and they are highly insulated and, and uh, high energy efficiency type of structures. That I could see by, by his presentation and also the cost saving in, in, in energy use. That is all very attractive, 
accept its uh, legalistic acceptance part. That's the one which is going to have a problem. And the way to challenge that one will be, if I was, we were not discussing this meeting, and you were sitting in, um, I, I was to talk to Matt in City of Central, and say I want to get it done, what will be Matt's reaction? And his reaction is going to come from two sources. One is not knowing the various possibilities. That is the modular home for which we might be able to help him as to how to approach that thing and how to get it declared a, a modular product more widely acceptable, uh, acceptable within a state. Uh, but rather than a nationwide mobile home also come with a negative uh, connotation. Sure. Cheap and and many jurisdictions, including City of Central, has restrictive covenants. Right. So that, well, that, I think what you're saying makes sense. I can, I can talk to Paul. I think talking to Paul we can we can go the the modular home route and then we've talked to Martin previously that we may have to look on a state by state basis. There may be certain states that are more likely candidates than others just based upon their acceptance of quote unquote a modular home. Um, and that would, I guess that would be the other piece of the right Ashok? Right. And, and I think if you are going to talk to Paul, get, get that uh, video and sketch at least and show it to him. If you can get that with what he had and see if you can talk to Paul. And once you and Paul have, have talked, I can. I can uh, venture into it and try to see if there is a creative way. We have uh, actually allowed uh, homes, each uh, mobile home, to be built on on a site by site basis by declaring each such place to be a factory in itself. Hmm. It's creative, <laughs> but said well, uh, lot number eight is a factory. And lot number B is the factory. However, it, the chassis is there, the things are there, and many a times the the inspection agencies they they want a special quality control for that. There are ways to do that, but um, manufactured home approach is not ready for the kind of product which is making, which is a high energy efficient, probably uh, a well built, uh, uh, maybe not as competitive in cost as the uh, manufactured home industry. What are the typical costs of certification for both the modular and manufactured? What are we talking about? Like a million bucks? Or no, I, I don't believe that it is going to be a million bucks on that, that type of a thing. It is um, e each unit. Uh, once it is uh, in the in the mobile arena, once that home package is uh, uh, approved, then it gets um, a, min a mobile home approval, and that's good all over. And I think that itself cost is not very high. Uh, it will be in a uh, few thousand dollars rather than a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But the problem is not the engineering. Mm -hmm. problem is the legality. It has to be uh, shown as uh, multiple time transportable. You almost have to change your mindset that it is a transportable home like a, a, a uh, travel trailer or things of that kind. Yeah. Except that in this case you can actually take the, uh, uh, the wheels off and let the chassis be there because chassis becomes part of integral part of the floor. It uh, allows you to get a, a bigger span of the, the joist with only two by sixes rather than two by eight or two by tens. Uh, so chassis becomes a structural element, but then the chassis is coated uh, by piers or pillars or things like that. Engineering is not a problem. I think it is the legality which is going to be a problem. Meaning for engineering, there can be number of people, including over office, which might be able to help. 
when you say legality, you meaning simply that the engineering has to comply with certain very specific things. Very specific thing, that, uh, the, uh, and you said what is the definition of a manufactured home. I will read it to you, and, and that is where. Chris, do you know what the size, max size of a, of a mobile home is? Can it be 16 like we have it today? Can that go on a highway? No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's a, well, I think the max size is just what you can pull. You know, what can, how many There is no so. size requirement. There is a minimum requirement, but not a, a max requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, just one minute. Is, is there a, a, a current pass, password into that? <laughs> So that's limited only by... Just give me one second. Please. Just limited by the, the transportation the option. And then, then she can put the changes. Yep. Right. Uh, and what is this thing? F-O-C. F-O-C. Yeah, what I think we, we should probably explore is the modular piece of it and then see how... Like we said, we, you know, kind of work it backwards. So, okay, so what is required to say, okay, this is modular, and then compare to what you wanted to do, and see what kind of modifications would be required to, and and then as Ashok has mentioned, then we need to get to the state level and figure out, you know, where which which states are going to be most attractive, and have the least resistance to something. And and then, you know, there are plenty of examples out there today of people building modular homes. This is not, you know, unique, but what the way that you're doing it is unique and the way that you're doing it with uh, individual teams and just maybe there may be some requirements on the front end during the construction phase at the plant that would be would have to be met and and help you through that part of it I believe okay. the definition of manufactured home is that uh, it is a, a home which is a minimum of eight body feet wide and uh, and 40 uh, feet long, so it is a minimum of 320 square feet, which has eating, bathing, sleeping uh, built into that, and it is transported. So the, you can make it two-story, you can make it as big of a home as you want. It is for a basically designed as a single family structure. Uh, which has eating, bathing, and cooking facilities, and and is a minimum of 320 feet square foot, and is transportable. Mm -hmm. Can that be broken into two, two pieces? So uh, many people do. Uh, they they build unit number one and unit number two. So they many times have a most common type of homes are single section homes which are 14 to 16 foot wide and anywhere between 50 feet long and things of that kind. Mm -hmm. The majority of them or quite a large number of them are two section homes which are uh, then make it a 20, uh, uh, 28 to 32 foot uh, wide and uh, in, in terms of its length can be 40, 50, 60. So they can make uh, uh, mobile homes which are uh, close to 1,800, 2,000 square foot, and there are triple uh, wide sections also. Mm -hmm. People have become very creative. Uh, uh, let me try to show you a pictures of some of those homes. I do not know if this one will capture that, or you can see some of them. But these are oh, wow. uh, yeah, currently uh, what are uh, uh, mobile homes. <laughs> And, and and if you look at them, they don't look like that. Yeah. But what your definition is? So it is uh, the size and efficiency. These are minimum standards which HUD has uh, set up. If somebody actually makes high energy homes, it is then marketing from that point onward rather than legality. The legality is transportability mm -hmm. yeah. of the unit as a unit. That is not as easy as it may look. There's definite engineering requirements for that, yes. And, and, and people have tried quite a bit to make it integrated floor systems by honeycomb uh, systems and things like that. We take the wheels out. And then the, its pricing 
becomes an issue. So it, it is a, a combine. It, it's never really an engineering problem. It is almost always legal and or cost problem. So I would okay. suggest that uh, you have some discussion with uh, uh, Paul. Uh, I I am uh, planning to meet with Paul tomorrow anyway. So I will check with him if you and Paul have talked and see what is possible under the modular program systems. I'll get in touch with Paul today. All right. Thank you, Ashok. Thanks for your time. Okay, and and if something moves further, um, I will be more than happy to to join. You. Okay, and uh, for you, March, I'll be back in touch with you shortly on this. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Chris. Just one last thing uh, regarding the electrical yes. part with the PV. Um, do you think you guys can still help us out? I didn't get hear any response from the man. Um, should I try again? Or? Oh, Rudy Saperiti. Yeah, let, let me give Rudy a phone call, and I'll have him get in touch with you. Let me call him right now. Okay. All right, guys. Well, All right. Thank you, thank you March. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Craig. Okay. Thank you. Bye now. Uh -huh.